Welcome to another video about the Zoom PodTrack P4. In this video, we are specifically talking about the PodTrack P4 and comparing it to the Zoom H5. The reason for this comparison is that this was my most recommended recorder for starting out podcasters up until now, and there are some great differences between these two recorders. However, there are still use cases for the Zoom H5 and also features that this recorder has, which the PodTrack P4 does not. However, for podcasting, I think it's safe to say the probably better choice for you is going to be the Zoom PodTrack P4. Now, before we jump into the comparison, one quick disclaimer, the PodTrack P4 was sent to me by Sound Service GmbH in Germany. This is a loaner device. I am going to be sending this back once I am done making these videos. And these videos are not going to be shown to Sound Services GmbH or Zoom itself before they are going to be published. So these are my honest reviews and also comparisons. The Zoom H5 as well as the F6, which I'm using for the audio recording right now, because most of the time when you're navigating the menus, you can't record on these recorders. So that's the recorder I am going to be using. However, the F6 and the H5 are devices that I purchased with my own money for use in my studio and in my productions. Now, some of the very easy comparisons or differences between these two devices. And keep in mind, they are made in a two different times because the H5 was released years ago and the pot track is just now coming out. So there are differences because of this age difference, but there are also differences because of the target audience. Now, of course, the PodTrack P4 is aimed toward podcasters and has specific features which are only really needed in that realm. The H5, on the other hand, is more a handy recorder. That's what the H stands for. And for example, features a microphone capsule right on top of the device. This is something that the pod track, for example, does not feature. And you will always need a XLR microphone. Like for example, in my case right here, I have the Shure Beta 57A hooked up to the pod track right now. So that's one of the key differences with this setup. With the H5, you have these capsules and you can also remove them and then you have this connector and that's actually really cool because that means that you actually have different kinds of capsules available to be attached to the Zoom H5 right at the top here and you also get a little gain knob right here. There are a plethora of different capsules available. There is a shotgun microphone. There's this XY configuration. And also there is a round capsule. And one of the more notable ones, which was interesting for podcasting specifically with the H5, is that there's also a capsule which provides two additional XLR inputs, which you have available at the top here once you have that capsule hooked up. However, that also makes the Zoom H5 more expensive to feature for XLR ports and the top capsule with the XLR inputs does not feature phantom power. Something specifically about this capsule, which the H5 usually comes with, is that it actually features a mini jack connection right here, which is a TRS port. So this XYH5 capsule actually has a mic or line in port built into it. But once you are using this, then this track, this is a stereo track, is going to be completely used by this input and no longer available for the mic capsules right at the top here. But of course, next to the capsules at the top, you also have these inputs at the bottom right here, where you have number one and two with a XLR input, as well as the jack input for example, for a electric guitar. Now, on the other hand, with the pod track being made for podcasting, you get four XLR ports, which are available right at the top of the device. 
as you can see these are non-locking connections and they are also not the combined jacks like these right here where you can also plug in for example a guitar or similar things but this is purely XLR based now something to go on to the front right here at the top we have these gain knobs which are very similar to the XLR gain knobs right here for channel 1 and 2 on the H5 you have these right there which control the gain of each individual XLR input below that you have the phantom power switch so you can just manually switch that on and off as well as these right here have a three step switch for microphones without phantom power microphones with phantom power and then of course also the functionality to add a phone call via bluetooth if you have the necessary adapter the bta2 adapter or you have a trrs to trrs connection which you then can connect to your phone and of course take a call remotely however that disables this input right here then of course we also have the fourth input which also is a three-step input with microphone with phantom power and of course also the USB input but that disables the fourth port right here. So in terms of inputs you have four XLR inputs with phantom power available on the pod track, two XLR inputs with phantom power on the H5 and you have two additional ones if you purchase the specific capsule with XLR inputs. Now that's not the only difference though because there is a lot more with the pod track you get these four pads for example which are sound pads and I have made a video specifically about that which you will find linked in the description as well as up here. There I'm going into depth of how these sound pads work and what they can be used for. For example intros as well as listener questions are really cool use cases for this. But in terms of differences, this is a feature that the H5 just does not have at all, which in a way makes sense because the H5 is made for intaking information and not for live mixing a podcast, which the PodTrack P4 is mostly focused on. The next difference I want to cover is that the Zoom H5 has a line out as well as a headphone output, and the PodTrack does not have a line out whatsoever. However, instead of that, it actually features four mini Klinke headphone ports with its own individual volume knobs so that if you have four guests which are connected with the XLR ports you can actually also have four headphone sets for each individual person one set and each person can individually change the volume and they don't have to listen to everything at the same volume so if someone has very sensitive ears they can have the sound lower and someone with bad ears can have the sound a little louder so that's something specifically for podcasting really cool and if you want to do remote calls and have local people in the studio this feature with the headsets for each individual person is perfect because there's almost no other way to integrate remote calls and have them be audible to four people or to three people and at the same time record those three people and with that it even has the mix down functionality so that the call only receives the local people and not themselves so that's something very important also going to be covered in a specific video how you can actually integrate remote calls into this device and there are actually two ways one is with your phone connected via bluetooth or trrs and the other is to actually connect your computer to this device now to finish off the most notable differences in terms of the outside world I have two more things. One is that the PodTrack P4 is actually connectable via USB-C and there are two USB-C ports on this device. One is just for power so this is just for USB-C power delivery and the other one is for data as well as power. So if you hook this up to a computer it will get power through this port if it's power delivery in enabled and also be able to connect to your computer as a hardware interface or audio interface so that this also can be recorded on your computer or live streamed via your computer and at the same time record everything on the device itself. 
Additionally, you can also bring audio from your computer, like for example, a Zoom call or a Skype call onto this. However, then you are going to lose the third or the fourth XLR port and you will only be able to use three of the XLR ports at that time. Now, I think that this is really forward thinking. USB-C is most certainly the future and in comparison, the H5 features a mini USB jack, not even a micro USB jack. And that's just because it is simply a relatively old device at this point. So you are going to be stuck to a very old connector. However, despite its age, the H5 can also be recognized as a hardware interface as well as a SD card reader, which the PodTrack also is able to do, so that you can leave the SD card inside of these devices and read the SD card from there. So you don't need an additional SD card reader if you don't want to use that. However, I find that the integration or the firmware of the H5 is way, way lacking in that department. I found it really hard sometimes to have this device recognized as an audio interface, which I had no problems whatsoever with the pod track. With the USB-C interface, I just hook it up. It immediately gets recognized as an audio interface and I also can record whilst being able to also have the recording run on the computer. And with the H5, you can either go into audio interface mode, but then you cannot record on the audio recorder itself and you can only use your computer for the recording purposes. But you have the ability to have multi-track recording with the H5 and stereo mode on the computer. So that's a plus for the H5, but the pod track has only the stereo mixed down available on the computer. So you can only get everything together mixed into one audio stream, which is a stereo mode. So this is how these two connect to your computer, but what about battery power? Now, basically they both have batteries and they both have double A batteries in them. So that's how they usually get powered. But of course, with the pod track and the USB-C I already mentioned, you can also power it via USB-C and at the same time still use it. And it will just go back to, if I unplug this, it will just go back to the battery power without taking a sweat. So that's a really cool way of making sure that you don't have this device cut out in the middle of a recording by putting two AA batteries into the device and also having some kind of USB-C power delivery. For example, something like this battery brick that I have right here, which is also a USB-C battery brick. So that would work perfectly with this audio recorder and that's really cool. Now it does not quite work the same way with the H5. You have the mini USB port right here. This also supports the power delivery, but I also found my problems there and it was not quite as easy to use as the pod track with the USB-C on that front. Now at this point, it's kind of unfair. The pod track is way newer, so it will have USB-C where the H5 does not have that. But of course, it's also much more interesting for podcasters to use the pod track instead of the H5. Specifically with the four inputs, that's already the most important part for most podcasters at least. However, there are a couple of key differences between these two in terms of its internal features, its software capabilities and recording capabilities. Now the SD cards on the H5 cannot be as large as on the pod track. On the pod track, you can put in up to 512 gigabytes of SD cards and that's kind of mind blowing. Now, on the other hand, with the H5, you have SDHC cards and I think they're limited to something like 32 gigabytes or something like that. I have always used this with a 16 gigabyte card and it works great. And with audio and WAV files, you usually get plenty of record time with this type of card. Now, going into the menus, however, there is a very, very strong difference on these two recorders. And that is that overall, the menus on the pod track are easy to navigate with the different buttons that you have right here on the front, you also have a very easy way to navigate the menus on the H5 with this kind of like a uh, swing button or something like that. 
But the strongest difference right here is how much more configurability you have on the H5. That's actually kind of mind blowing. Now you can manage your files here and you can also go into the folder management right there with the H5, but it is much more elaborate on the H5 than on the pod track. But more importantly is what about, for example, mic settings. This here has a low cut and a limiter built in. The low cut can actually be turned on and off and the limiter can also be turned on and off. And this can actually be done for each individual microphone. So you can have a low cut on channel one and a limiter on channel two and both on channel three. So that's really handy. But on the other side, of the H5 in this case, you actually have way more capabilities. So you have a low cut and you can say if you want to have this on all of them and you can actually decide what the low cut should be. And you can also have a compressor or limiter again with different settings. So for example, you can have a general compressor or a vocal or a drum or you have the limiter settings for general concert or studio. And with that, you also have the settings for phantom power. Now that's easier on the pod track with the switch at the top. And you have plug in power also, which is for this little connector right here at the top. So you have more customizability for the limiter as well as compressor and low cut filter. But you will hear in a sound sample that I can put right here. Dig deep within yourself. For there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. That basically the limiter on the H5 is completely useless and the sound out of the pod track is way, way better in that regard. So despite the customizations on the H5, the pod track definitely takes the cake in terms of sound quality. And that actually is very interesting because the next difference is something that the pod track doesn't even feature. There are just no settings for this and that is the recording format. On this age five, which is years old, you can choose between 44.1 kilohertz 16 bit and 44.1 kilohertz 24 bit, as well as the 84 kilohertz in 16 or 24 bit. And of course the highest in that one would be 48 kilohertz and 24 bit. Now the pod track on the other hand only has 44.1 kilohertz and 16 bit. Now there's the argument that this is very much enough for voice recording, for podcast recording. But I am now used to the F6, which I'm using for the recording right now, and that has 32-bit floating point audio, and I am used or have been used to 24-bit audio files from my H5. I would love if this would have been increased to at least 48 and 24 bit, but as it stands, this device records 16 bit at 44.1 kilohertz for voice recording, mostly enough, but it definitely is something where you want to keep track on your settings so that you don't have to do as much post-processing because you basically create a file that you can deliver that way or almost deliver that way after converting it to an MP3 or a AAC or something similar. But overall, it is surprising how good this pod track sounds considering that it only provides this type of recording settings. With the H5, you also have things like auto record. So you have a couple of settings there and you also can do pre-recordings and also have a left right backup channel for this top one right here. And there are no backup recordings on the pod track. So what you hear on the headphones is what you get as a recording. But what is nice is that you get all four channels recorded separately. In addition, you also get the sound pad channel and a mix down. Now that is something that this does not have. The H5 does not feature the ability to create a mix down of everything that you have recorded. You always get the channels that you recorded. So if you choose to record the left right channel and the number one channel on the XLR side, then you will get two files 
with a stereo file for the left right channel and a mono wave file for the number one channel. Now that is actually also something that's different on the pod track because on the pod track you will always record all of the channels. So that is four channels as well as one sound pad stereo channel. These four channels are usually in mono mode. And then you also get a stereo mix down of everything that is put out to the headphones right here. So essentially you will get six files with each recording you start. Now one little downside here is that you actually also use storage for all of the channels that are currently muted. However, the great thing is that it also means that you can unmute any of the channels whilst recording and you will not have any problems whatsoever. Now at this point, I think it's most important to also show you a sound comparison. I already showed you the sound comparison between the pod track and the limiters, specifically with the H5 and the pod track and how these two devices react very differently and sound very differently. And in my opinion, the H5 limiters are completely useless and you really have to nail your settings on that device. On the other hand, with the pod track, you can actually set your settings relatively loosely and then you are going to get a relatively good signal even if things become louder as the podcast interview or other recordings that you are doing with this setup change over time or people get more comfortable, for example, and start speaking a little louder. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Now I have a couple more notable things. One is that the H5 actually comes with a nice travel box so that you can put it in there and it is nice and secure and you don't have to worry about any of the buttons being pushed or any of the knobs and dials breaking off or anything like that. This is something that the pod track does not come with and you will have to make sure yourself that you don't take off these knobs. However, I also don't really fear them going off anytime soon. They are really solidly built and I would comfortably put this into a backpack and just travel with that. Or you could have some type of a fabric back or something that you can at least put it in with some of the cables. Maybe that would be an option there. Now last difference, and this is actually a major one, at least it was for me and really surprised me, is that the Zoom H5 still costs around 280 US dollars and I was able to found it for 240 euros. Now the pod track on the other hand is a new device, it's just coming out and it is now being sold for around 200 US dollars and 220 euros. And that is next to all the other features and despite the audio recording only being 16 bit and 44.1 kilohertz that is a absolute game changer to be able to record four podcast quality microphones with phantom power have the ability to live stream also have the ability to have everybody on the show able to listen to themselves as well as everybody else integration of remote calls and all of that this is the podcast recorder if you are doing any type of mobile recording you can't spend that much money this is a recorder that costs around 200 dollars 220 euros it features four ports 
four headphone outputs. Of course, you will need more gear for your podcast, but this is most certainly the best option if you're looking for something on a budget that's mobile, that features four XLR ports, as well as headphone outputs, and also has the ability to take remote calls and also integrate with your computer, for example, to use this for live streaming your podcast. Additionally, it's bleeding edge in terms of its firmware integration into computers, as well as the USB-C ports. It really is a great device. Now, if you want the highest possible quality in terms of your audio recording, then of course there are other devices for you. And I am going to compare this PodTrack P4 also in another video to the Zoom F6, which would be my personal preference because of my use case. This is a completely different situation for different people and I totally understand that. That's why I'm going to be comparing it to that device and have compared it to the H5, which was my top recommendation for podcasters that want to start out at the moment. Now I'm switching that over to the PodTrack P4 because of all the reasons that I just mentioned. For podcast recording, it's hands down the best recorder that I currently can find even if you are looking at the roadcaster but just taking this feature set at that price point this is a really solid buy now of course if you want to shop the zoom pod track p4 some places you can already pre-order it in other places maybe you can already order it by the time this video comes out the links in the description at least some of them will be affiliate links and that helps out me to make more videos like this and give you all this information available here on youtube now, if you have any questions about this pod track P4 or the H5 or the F6, please feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. Please also note that I am not the support for these companies, so I might just refer you to those places if I don't have any solutions. And I also will not have the pod track available to myself in a couple of weeks from now because I will be returning this unit to Sound Services GmbH, who were really nice to loan this out to me for these comparison videos and of course my review. Now, if this video was helpful for you, I would appreciate a thumbs up. That helps out a great deal with the YouTube algorithm and also helps others find these videos as well. Now, if you want to watch more videos, I have some on the screen right here about the PodTrack P4 and a playlist with other videos as well. I think that might be really interesting for you. And last but not least, subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with all the videos that I am creating here. And of course, hit the bell icon so that you are notified whenever I I upload a new one. Now, with all of that said, make it your life, make it your podcast, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.